This episode is brought to you by school. School is a great thing because no matter who you are and no matter when it is, school will never change, especially high school. High school is great because since the fucking 1900s and the probably way earlier, school has just been the same fucking thing. You wake up at 7 a.m., you get to class, you take social studies and history and math and algebra and... Well, those are two of the same things divided into two different options or categories. You get what I'm saying. Uh, It's the same fucking shit. There's five classes or six classes. You have lunch. There's a study hall. It's like seven hours. It's always been seven hours. Uh, And that's, that's about it for school. There's not really any big changes, you know, with technology. We can look back in the past 50 years or 100 years and you could see flip phones and box phones and car phones and pay phones and pagers and fucking all these different things and Motorola razors and then the first blueberry or black okay blueberry god the first blackberry that was half touchscreen and then there was full touchscreen iPhones you really can see like a fucking really evolved uh, timeline of technology and even you know probably clothes as well uh, even though clothes like the 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 materials in clothing aren't really like advancing a ton, you can't really do fucking much. But like you can see that it's changed and that like style has changed. A lot of things over time change, you know. Cars even look at cars. They used to be like eight hundred fucking million pounds, and they wouldn't even have AC in there. And now you got Netflix, and you could fucking watch porn while you're on the highway, and you don't even have to be driving. You could be double, double fucking, you could be double handing it, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, uh, a lot of things when you look at like the big shit in the world, the thing, things that people always need, and one of them is cars and transportation, one of them is definitely cell phones, and one of them that people, I mean, will always be going to at least until they're 18 is school. But school is the only one that doesn't change, and that's why it's great. So I wanted to sponsor this by the idea of going to school. Um, you know, I, okay, on this episode I'm talking, sorry, on this episode I'm talking about how this past week I went to speak at my old high school and I gave, I delivered some fucking amazing speeches to some classes and uh, they went really well. I got some notes. I got like 60 notes here, which I'm not going to obviously read them all, but I got a ton of notes from the students that uh, gave some feedback, what they thought, and there's some really good shit in here. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's important that even though you, you might be listen, listening to this right now and you could be 80 fucking five years old, but we could all relate because we all went to school. And right now in this week, the theme matches the time because everyone's going back to school. And I remember going back to school, one of my, it wasn't the first day, but I remember, okay, wait, for, back up. The first week or two weeks of school is always just like the teachers want to be cool and they want to like get in with the students, okay? So here's what they'll do. Everyone gets in the class. There's like 30 kids that flood the class. And then the teacher's sitting there and she's like, do whatever you want. It's a, it's a, the first day. Chill out. Do whatever you guys want. Today's going to be a chill day. We're going to, there's either that type of teacher or there's the teacher that like, has a fucking, like the whole class is set up in circles and circles, the whole, like all the desks are surrounded in the classroom in one big ass circle. I remember teachers did this all the time when I was in high school and you would walk in and she would just say like, go ahead, sit anywhere, get the fuck to sit down and we're going to do a class activity. So everybody or the guy, you know, it doesn't have to be a female. Usually females are the teachers because I don't, for me, I don't know, the men kicked me out of their class because they thought I was an asshole. So, um, you would have to, and, and this is high school guys, high schoolers do this shit. Like no joke either. It would be like, write a note card of like what respect means to you and then write it, write three fun things you did this summer. And okay. If you're in sixth grade, it's cool because you could be like me and my dad went skiing, but like, 
I mean, I, guess, I don't know why the fuck you would go skiing in the summer, but you get what I'm saying. If it, if you're in grade school, that type of shit is okay. But like seventh and eighth grade, like okay, yeah, I don't know, I chill out. And then high school, like really nobody is gonna say what the fuck they're doing because the seniors are are not gonna sit there and be like, yeah, me and my fucking me and my boys got high and I fucked three girls this weekend. Like, nobody's going to say that. So they're only really looking for you to say, like, they're what they're really asking you is, like, what fun vacation did you do or what fun PG activity can you share with us? So that shit sucks, okay? Uh, I remember sitting there and just being like, God, every fucking year, I have to, yeah, me and my mom, we go out to eat. <laughs> I didn't really do, like, I don't do vacations a lot. Uh, especially because my parents are divorced. So I didn't have, like, fun shit. And then there was always one kid that, that's like, me and my brother, we went fucking water skiing and we raced down to Wisconsin. Like, nobody gives a fuck, dude. Can we just get, move on? Let's just start social studies. So my point of, of explaining why this is so dumb is because teachers really try to, like, overdo the first day or the first week and if you're listening to this and you're 50 years old i'm really curious what you remember doing on your first day of high school like did they do the same shit or was there like what it was it just like i think it should be the first day of school definitely like get to know each other in the classroom like i would have like 10 minutes of you guys could like come up to the class and and talk about yourself but not in a PG fucking filtered bitch ass way. Like come up here and tell us three things that you absolutely love. That way someone could go up there and be like, I love smoking weed. I love to have sex and I love to get money. And I feel like that's what a a lot of kids in high school probably would say. If I got up there and, and there was no rules, I would say, you know, I love to host a podcast every week. I host it every Sunday. I would obviously have to plug myself. Cause I'm a fucking salesman. Um, I would say, I would probably say like, yeah, I love to, I love to get fucking weird in bed with a partner. That's like, you know, that I'm in, that I care about. I would love to get weird in bed with a partner that I care about. What the fuck are the students going to say to that? You're going to have a problem with that. I don't think so. The third one would be, I love to sit in bed and watch scary fucking movies and act like I don't have to do anything in my life sometimes. Sometimes it's nice to just get, take away from the fucking pain of the real world and, you know, and numb your mind with a nice cold vanilla ice cream and, and just watch some of the scariest shit that you've ever seen. And I would say that to the students and, I, and they would probably all look at me like, holy fuck, maybe I should try that. And then you're opening up each other's minds rather than, Hi, I'm fucking Bernie, and I go to sc- and I go to school. You know, nobody gives a fuck about that. So, on this first day, uh, this was Wednesday. So this was like a f- uh, four days ago, five days ago. Uh, my world history teacher, she was posting on Snapchat. She was like, uh, "How do I? How can I get these students to fucking pay attention in class?" Is basically what she was saying. She explained that uh, last year, like. Over 50%, over 50% of the students were using their phones at all times. Not at all times, but like a majority of the time, she said, there was only like a handful of kids that were never on their phones. And the majority, they were always trying to get on their phone, always trying to Snapchat, always getting caught, which even like four or five years ago when I was in high school, I remember that like... I was the asshole that always wanted to be on my phone, but nobody was on their fucking phones. Like, it just started being a thing uh, maybe junior year when, like, everyone started being like, okay, fuck you, we're going to use them. But now they've installed a new thing, at least at my old school, and this is fucking wild. Like, this is when you see the divide. This is when you see the world starting to really fucking go on a, on a, down, on a downhill fucking slope. Uh, if you can't see behind me, there's a... Big organizer. I want you to picture a, I don't know, two feet wide and three feet tall square thing that has, uh, not a hundred, that has, let's say, 30 or 40 pockets in it. And they're numbered one through 40 or one through 30. Picture that in your fucking mind, okay? Now, on this thing, each number has like a little pocket behind it. So you can put your phone in this pocket, right? And the fucking geniuses at my school district 
they thought if we put this in every room, uh, kids are going to walk in and put their phone in this fucking thing, okay? And let me just give you a quick, a quick little fucking insight from a kid that went to school only a few years ago. If I went to the school, there's no fucking, I will drop out before I do this shit. Like, absolutely not. Uh, I, I don't like to be separated from my phone. I don't like to be like, okay, here's the, there's two sides of this. If I walked into class and this was a thing and my teacher said, you guys have to put your phones in this right now. And it will be like that for the rest of the year. I will probably fight my way to drop out of school or I would convince the teacher. I would really sell that my parents don't allow me to have a cell phone and that they're so strict about it. And that like, I, I don't even, I'm not even allowed. I would act like my mom and dad have made me not have a cell phone and I don't get one until I'm married. I would say some stupid shit and I would say, because I believe in God, it's a religion thing. You can't fucking go against it. I would really try to sell that. Like, I just don't have a phone period because there's a fucking dude, this is sickening. And here's why it's sickening. Okay. For, from the teacher's perspective, it's sickening because the students can't fucking put their goddamn phones down for three seconds. And it's gotten to the point where your self-control isn't even there and we have to literally force you to put your phone in this fucking pouch. That's what sucks for the teachers. Now for the students, it sucks because a lot of students just look at their phones as like, this is my thing. Like, this is how I contact my friends. This is how I talk to my family. This is how I fucking play RuneScape. This is how I beat off. Like, it is everything for them. It's friendship. It's sex. It replaces fun with, like, entertainment and just apps. Like, phones replace a lot of that shit. And things on phones replace a lot of that. So, I grew up not having my phone since I was... Or I grew up having my first phone when I was in, like, 8th grade. So, I kind of knew what it was like having... like. I was built on genuine connections and like great friendships that required walking across the neighborhood and seeing my friend and playing ball every day or whatever the fuck. Like I had that. Thank fucking God I was able to be like one of the last batches of kids that came out that could actually enjoy human connection in a natural way before being given a phone. Now you have to remember a lot of these kids that are 14 right now like they were probably handed a phone when, or they could very much have been handed a solid phone when they were like six or seven or given a, I don't think iPads were a thing 14 years ago, but I want to say definitely like eight years ago, iPads were a thing. So they could have been six years old and their dad was fucking busy. So gave him an iPad. Now six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, they're not really looking to go hang out with their friends. Sure. They're going to have play dates that their parents arrange, but like a lot of their their connections and shit is built off of cell phones. So they have a more drawn connection for their phone and more of like a sickening fucking addiction. And that's in my opinion. And I think that's a, a very like reasonable fucking theory that I have that like is a little is why the connection the connection with your phone is only going to get stronger is basically what I'm saying for kids especially and moving forward there's fucking three the other day I went out to eat and n no joke, I was, me and, me and my girl were on a date and we looked to our right, we're getting pizza, all right, we're at a pizza place, but it's like a cute pizza place. We looked to our right, there's a family and the mom's on the phone and the dad's on, a, on his phone and I swear to fucking God, they're like, I'm not going to be mean. They had a daughter that looked very, okay. It doesn't matter what she looked like, right? Uh, they had a daughter that looked like she could have been 10 years old or maybe 11. And she's got headphones on, okay? Big ass, like, over-the-ear headphones. Not even, like, AirPods. Like, she's trying to be, like, chill. Over-the-ear headphones. This bitch has a mouse and her fucking laptop. And I can't see what she's doing, but I know she's playing a game. I could swear she's playing Fortnite or some shit. But, like, you go, you're going out to eat. When you're home, I get if you want to be like the kid that's like, fuck you, mom, I'm staying in my room, bitch, fuck you. I get that. But if you're like going out to eat, it's like once in a while thing, and you're, you are have your headphones in, you're locked into your screen, you brought a mouse, and the parents are okay with that, like it's so fucked 
for the kid to be doing that. And then it's even more fucked that the parents are okay with that. I almost thought I was on that fucking what would you do show. Because I should have just got up and went up to the dad and been like, dude, you're fucking losing. But I didn't. I mean, I guess it's not really my spot to say that, but I really, really wanted to. Most of the time, if I feel a way about something and I feel like I could, like, I actually, you know what? I should have went up to her or I should have went up to the parents and said something because it would have changed the kid's life in a good way. I think if I would have like, or, or, and, and I, what do I risk? Me getting fucking punched in the face? Like, you know what? Yeah. Next time I see that shit, I'm fucking, I'm deciding right now live on the podcast. Next time I see a fucking three-year-old with a p- iPad, I'm going up to the parents and being like, guys, this is going to fuck your kid up. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not even going to try to teach them. I'm just going to, they're going to look at it as like, was that even real that that happened? And it's going to be so eye-opening that hopefully they go home and you're, they're like, you know what? Let's fucking quit this shit. And the chance that they do, it's worth it. And if the dad gets up and he's like, get out of my face, faggot, then I'll be like, okay, well, sorry, guys. And then, I, then I'll fucking leave. You know, either way, it's worth me getting my ass beat to change a kid's fucking future. Okay, that's, that's really the truth right there. And I know I kind of branched off into like eight little mini stories. But back to speaking at the schools. Okay, no, wait. Back to the cell phone thing. Part of what I explained in my speech for this class, which I'll go over the beginning of it too, but at the end of it, I dropped a fucking bomb on these. Okay, well, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to say like I dropped a bomb when I'm talking about school. That's probably fucked up. Um, I, I dropped a explosion. Okay, fuck. I really dropped some knowledge on these motherfuckers, okay? On these 15 to 18-year-old kids. This is a world history class, so... They could be freshmen, they could be seniors. Like, it's an elective, you could be any age. Now, at the end of my speech, which they loved, and I'll go over that in a second. At the end of my speech, I I, I walk over to this cell phone pouch thing, and I go, like, I want to get real with you guys for a second. This is fucking dark, but it's real, and it's important that all of you guys realize this. Uh, I said that my brother had lost, which is a real true story, uh, my brother had lost two friends, in the NIU shooting that was, I believe, in 2009. It's kind of fucked that I don't know the exact date, but um, it was on, like, Valentine's Day. And there was a shooting at NIU, and it wasn't, like, huge, but it's a fucking school shooting, and my brother lost two people that he really knew. So that affected him. But I remember watching my mom, or actually I don't really remember watching. I remember hearing my mom um, freaking the fuck out, and I remember her texting my brother and wanting to go to the school and calling him and he was okay and the fact that he could call back and the fact that he could text her and say I love you that was like huge because at that moment you don't know if you're going to lose somebody in your fucking life out of absolutely nowhere so if you could at least say I love you and like call each other and hear their voice at least before anything could go wrong uh, that's like pretty huge right Now, I explained to these students that story, and then I explained to them, guys, if we fucking all put our phones in this bin, or in in these pouches, 35 of us put our phones in this pouch. Now, let's say all of a sudden the school goes on lockdown. All the students go to one end of the room. You do like your routine. Uh, Usually the routine is like stay very quiet, get in the corner of the room, and like just don't fucking move, which I don't really understand what that's doing, but... That's what it is. Like the teacher runs to the door and locks it and then you kind of all hide in your room. There's not really anything else you could do, right? So if we're all hiding or if we're all like being very quiet and we have our phones, uh, we could pull out our phone and we could text our mom and our dad and like everyone and say that we love them. If our phones are in this fucking pouch, now school goes on lockdown Everyone sprints to these pouches and they're ripping phones out and they're freaking the fuck out, which is the opposite of being quiet and relaxed and calm. And anything can happen if you're running around back and forth in a room. A gunman comes up to the window, sees that there's a lot of fucking kids running around. It's just like, it's really fucked up. It's really sad. I understand that nobody wants to talk about this shit, but uh, you, you have to, you know, and especially when they're kids like you don't want to say it because it's so dark and it's so real and it's so fucking like nobody wants to think about that. But my way of thinking, I was exposed to some fucked up shit when I was a kid and whether it was by choice or by a friend or by my family or seeing things, 
I was exposed to a lot of dark shit and that made me appreciate a lot of things more and it gave me a lot more of like, I don't know, like it just made me a lot more down to earth and like real and like if I'm going to do something, I want to know the bad consequences or the bad possibilities or the bad outcomes or yeah, the consequences. Like I want to know everything bad and good. So when I told students about that, then they were like, holy fuck. Like I could see in their face, their jaws were dropped because they were like, like this makes fucking sense. And like nobody had a word to say. Nobody was laughing. Like it was very serious. And I was like, this teacher is giving you guys a chance to keep your phones in your pocket and just silence them. And she's trusting you to not use your phone in the middle of class. In return, what you guys could do is like, just listen to her, you know, don't pull out your phones in class. And the reward is you don't have to put your phone in this fucking sickening pouch. So it was, I was trying to give the kids purpose and like, or like reasoning when they want to Snapchat their friends. But now they're going to, even though it's fucked up, but now they're going to think of that lockdown scenario. And hopefully if they want to get fucking Snapchatty in class, hopefully they think twice about it and they keep their phone in their pocket and, uh, you know, they're happier with their phone in their pocket, knowing that it, at any worse, like if there's a worse fucking case scenario, worst case scenario. Yeah. If there's one of those, they'll be fucking fine. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, also the first like 20 minutes of this speech that I was giving them or 10, 15 minutes was me explaining the first thing that I said to my teacher before I did this talk, I was like, I, I I'm going to be swearing. Like I'm not fucking PGing it. I'm going to be real. I might talk about sexual shit. I might talk about obviously not like crazy things. I'm not going to go there and be like, Hey guys, how to give a fucking BJ? I was talking about like why uh, you might be texting in class. And I said, you might want to be like when I was giving examples of why people text in class, I was saying, you know, I get it. I text in class all the time. I would always be like sexting with my girlfriend or I'd be flirting around. I was saying that type of shit. It wasn't vulgar. Um, and then I said, I definitely will be swearing. So the first thing I said when I got, when I got in the classroom, when all the kids were sitting down, I said, I know you're used to seeing uh, like a valedictorian or a straight A student come into the classroom and speak. And usually guest speakers are people that have accomplished a ton academically. And I remember seeing guest speakers like that and I could never relate. So uh, to get to know me, I said, like I was a straight D student. Uh, I fucking hated school. I was always on my phone. I pulled out this this packet that I had and I like waved it in front of them. And I was like, I had 84 hours of detention. Like I was a straight shit student. I used my phone all the time. And let me explain to you the value of uh, using your phone and, or the value of not using your phone and why it's important to be uh, considerate of other people. Because I literally wasn't like anybody that sits here and is a straight A student and laughs and fucking has fun and does like, chess club after class and has never got, I mean, I don't know why it's laughs and have fun. Like anybody could laugh and fucking have fun. I don't know why those two are in there. Anybody that has straight A's is in like chess club and never had a detention in their life. Obviously he will be able to tell you how to never get a detention. Right. But he's telling you that from the good fucking goody two shoes point of view, not from the shithead point of view or the rough upbringing or the three brothers or the I don't give a fuck or any of that type of like lifestyle. So that's why I thought it was really important to me to talk to these kids because I gave them like I gave them something to fucking uh, what's the like someone to relate to and a, a perspective to relate to not just this like robotic get A's be great say I love you to every one of your friends like, just, you know what I mean? Just fucking cringy, weird shit. I didn't want to be like that. And uh, some of these notes were, like, really, really awesome. And some of the fucking questions these kids asked, like, one, after my, my speech to these students, one of the kids raised his hand. He was fucking 15 years old. He raised his hand and he goes, he asked me how, what the fuck did he say? He was like, how bad was your childhood that you ended up like this? And I was like, holy fuck, like 14 or 15 years old? Like that kid kind of shit on my life for a second. But 
I even explained to the, like I answered his question. I said, you know, like as a kid, my parents got divorced when I was in like middle school. Uh, I didn't have the greatest, like, I, I mean, I had it pretty fucking well. I said, there was nothing, like I wasn't beat. I wasn't fucking like, I don't know. I wasn't like very extremely poor. I, I didn't have to, a lot of the things that I wanted, I was able to get. I had a very close family. It started to break apart a little bit at the fucking end there when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13, when my parents got divorced. But I was explaining to them that like the importance of being honest with your parents is really fucking like telling your parents, if you, if you drank a night at a party, tell your mom and your dad, because if they're cool with it, they'll understand and they'll be like, okay, we'll just like try to not do that a lot. Or like, we're happy that you were honest with us. It lets you be more open with them. And if your parents are the type to be strict, then you tell your parents, I smoked weed or I did cocaine or whatever. And the second that they're not cool with that, they will fucking yell at you or ground you or whatever the fuck. And then you really learn like why those things are bad rather than like living two lifestyles and going to school one day and being like a goody two shoes and then coming home and being the pothead fucking coke kid, you know? So I think I, man, I wish I fucking recorded it. Next time I do it, I'm going to be back there definitely, uh, hopefully by the end of this semester, if not next one. But when I go back, I'm, I'm going to fucking just put a little lapel mic on and I'll record it. And then maybe I'll just post that as one of the weeks because I, I think it's interesting. And I, don't, I know that it's like, you don't have to be 15 years old to like this shit. You know, you, you can be 35 and appreciate what I'm trying to fucking help these students understand and the points that I'm trying to make and understand the whole concept of like, how about we listen to a 20 year old kid talk about school rather than listening to these fucking 40 and 50 year olds that can't even relate to what it's like being in school nowadays. So yeah, I got some, some notes that I, I only want to read these because if, if some of the students do listen to this episode, I want them to hear that I'm reading their voice or their, their thing. So this one says, just let him know that his podcast went viral on a snap on Snapchat yesterday. Everyone's putting ton or everybody's putting it on their stories. I listened to it. He's very real. Um, yeah, I guess like the students were posting my fucking podcast, which is really cool. Thank you guys. This one doesn't have a name on it. So if you said it, you know. Um, I really like his presentation. He gave out good advice. I took that I shouldn't be using my phone during class because it's not worth it and it's better to pay attention. When Angelo came and spoke to the class, I took away how to appreciate some things that actually may seem small, but actually are huge. Um, that's fucking, it's pretty good. Let's see what else here. There's literally like, there's fucking, I don't even know, 70. And half of these are written like shit because I know that these kids don't have great handwriting. Um, I learned not to be Angelo and to listen to my teachers and prove when to put your or when to put my phone away when we're learning or doing stuff in class and let your teacher know what's happening. Um, I told them that, like, if something's really serious, if your fucking mom died or your brother's in the hospital or your ex or your girlfriend just dumped you, it's like something really fucking is going on that you can't focus, go up to your teacher and be like, hey, I just got dumped. I'm fucking sad as shit. Can I please go outside and take a few minutes? There's no fucking way a teacher is going to let a 14 year old or is going to say no to that when like a 15 year old kid is being that fucking straight up and honest. I think teachers will really appreciate that. And I know the one that I was working with will. Uh, but yeah, like I remember what it was like. I was angsty as fuck. I was always having a bad day or having a great day or like, I don't know how that makes sense. I, one day I was having a great day. The next day it was horrible. The next day I was pissed off. The next day I was like, it was literally the most bipolar fucking freshman and sophomore you'd ever met. But yeah, like it was just because I was, a lot of hormones are going through your fucking body. You don't really know how to react to things yet. One friend pisses you off. You think it's the end of the world. Your girlfriend gets mad at you and you're fighting and you think that's the end of the world. So you're going through a lot of shit. But when it's serious, you know, like... My girlfriend, when we broke up, I was really fucking sad. Like, it was, that's just how it was. I was fucking 15, and I was sad as shit, and I did not give a fuck to learn about Abraham Lincoln at the time because I was more worried about the girl I was in love with. So what did I want to do? Well, get the fuck out of class. I was honest with my teacher, and some of them did let me leave. The ones that didn't, I just walked out. You know, that's how it worked with me. 
I was like, I was going to get what I wanted either way. I just wanted to at least try to make people understand. Uh, there was also a teacher that I, I remember I was such a piece of shit to, and I wasn't like, I wasn't like calling her mean shit. I wasn't being directly mean to her, but I would just never, like I would sit there and straight up ignore her. I would like sit on my phone and she would talk to me and I would just be like, Hey, I'm not, I don't care about this class. I'm just going to walk out. And she would get so frustrated and so like, she would take things very personally. And, uh, I remember I made her cry one day because I just like, was just not answering her. I was fucking like being mean. I walked out and I found out that she cried that day because of me. So being the adult that I am now, I went back when I was there speaking, uh, I went back to her classroom and I said, I was sorry. And I said, like, I appreciate that you work hard and that you're just trying to make these students understand things and you're just trying to help. And it was unfair that I disrespected you that way. And I was young and I didn't understand the whole concept of like treating people with respect. Like literally I didn't get it. And she was really fucking touched by that. So, and, and so was I, it was nice to be able to like come from being that shitty student and like seeing myself mature and seeing myself grow and then being able to like come there face to face with people that I was shitty to and admit that I was wrong. And I fucking, you should do that. You know, you should be able to at least admit when you're wrong in any case. But moving forward with these notes, um, I should respect others and how important school is for you. He was very straightforward, funny, and open. I loved his stories. It made me realize that I have to take high school very seriously and just focus on each individual class. Also to respect any teacher that I have come across of. Yeah, I was definitely saying like respect your teachers because regardless, like just don't be a cock, man. Um, very funny. He knows how to tell great stories. Don't be the annoying student. Don't do dumb stuff to impress others to be cool. Uh, find your true self. Don't please others. Like the fact that I let like if I, the fact that they took this shit away from my speech is like extremely fucking touching. Like that's I literally was up there talking to these students thinking like I would fucking love to be a teacher and just really change these kids fucking lives. And doesn't mean I would want to teach math or teach science. Even if I was to teach an elective or teach a class that's, or even do like, instead of a study hall, like do a group therapy and I would fucking be there. And like anybody could talk to me about anything and we could all talk and share ideas. Uh, somebody mentioned me that the other day that like study hall should be group therapy. And that was like, I just thought like I should fucking be the one hosting that shit because even like, why can we all, why are we all expected to learn math together or learn reading together, but we can't like express our fucking express our feelings together. You know what I mean? Uh, that's all. So I agreed with Angelo's opinions in regard to cell phone use and with him speaking on his experiences, it made me want to, it made me want to be like him in ways like doing what you're comfortable with, but not disrespecting teachers and being super funny. Uh, one, question, one question I have here for Angelo, have you caused or been involved in a physical fight at school? If you're listening to this right now, um, I have not been in a physical fight. I had a couple times, there was a kid that was making fun of another kid and calling him, uh, like calling him gay and calling him a fag and making fun of him for being gay, which I know I use that word sometimes, but I use it in like a fun way way and I don't use it directing towards other people usually if I use that word it's my example of what people say to me because that's what fucking people call me because of my paid nails but um I, it's a word that it's I know that I know I know when to recognize if it's serious or not and this was like somebody was looking at a gay kid that was actually gay and like just calling him the fucking just being fucking cruel you know being an asshole and I remember getting up and grabbing him and fucking pushing him and his desk back and being like, you don't fucking talk to people like that. Like, that's not cool. And I know it's not cool with him and it's not cool with me. If you do it again, I'm going to fuck you up in front of this whole class. And I got really mad because it's like, I know when I could say shit or when comedians could say shit and joke around, but like this kid was being serious and fuck that. And I know that the kid that was uh, on the other end of it, I know that he really fucking needed that help. And I'm sure he really appreciated it. So I wanted to do that for him. Did I go to college? Do I re regret screwing up in high school? This is a question from somebody that didn't write his name on the thing. Um, 
I don't go to college. I don't plan on it. Uh, do I regret screwing up in high school? No. I actually, I, I'm not even going to lie with you. I'm not trying to be a rebellious fuck here. I wish I could go back and be more of an asshole, but just be an asshole in a smarter way. You know, I wish I could go back and sell more. I mean, I sold a lot of shit in school, so I'm not even going to say I wish I could sell more. But I just wish I could, like, get the teacher's respect without having to bother students and be an asshole to students. I think a lot of, like, growing up and being an asshole was... I was disrupting students and disrupting teachers. And then at the end, the only people that could appreciate it was like very few students and very few teachers rather than like, if I could just do it now, there were some things that I wish I guess I didn't do. I like grabbed a kid's book and whipped it across the room. And I said like, fuck you to him. Like I probably shouldn't have done that, you know, but the cell phone stuff was cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I, I wish I didn't go to prom. Prom sucked. Like, I regret, like, good things about school. I wish I didn't go to prom, and I wish I didn't go to fucking walk for my graduation, because fuck those things. But I don't regret being bad. I just wish I was a little bit better, and, and like, I don't know. You get what I'm fucking saying. Maybe you don't. And if you don't, then, you know, sorry. Now, there's five in a row that say, come back to our class. Come back to our class. It was entertaining. Uh, please come back, in all caps. Um, so... Thank you. Tell tell your teacher. You guys know who you are. Tell your teacher. Invite me back. Uh, come back again, please. I took away that it's important to pay in t- attention to class. Um, his opinions are strong. School is not a joke. I learned that you should pay more attention. I mean, obviously, every fucking kid is saying this. Don't get bad grades. Turn your phone off. Uh, I understand now why we don't why we shouldn't use our phones in class. He was really cool, even though he didn't do good in school. He's still very successful. I taught his. Or I thought his story was very funny. Did a great job telling stories. I mean, a lot of these are the same fucking repetitive seven fucking things, but uh, I appreciate every single one of them. Really, I fucking do. Um, yeah, you know, it's it, one of my goals. I think I've said this on the podcast before. One of my like goals that I need to do, regardless, is to have a TED talk. And I think talking about like human connection and like what it means to fucking really, really understand somebody else and what it means to see things from different perspectives and all of that relationships. I really want to talk about that uh, to students as well. But I just want to do like doing this, speaking in front of students really inspired me to like, I need to fucking get this TED talk out there because I got some shit that I think is really important. Even the stuff that I talk about on this podcast, just about how real it is and how like we're not scared on this podcast to talk about real shit or sexual shit or whatever. Like the importance of not having a filter. Uh, there's there's so many. I want to I wanna do 10 TED Talks before I die. Uh, that's a goal of mine. So yeah, it was really awesome to get to speak to you guys. If you're listening to this, thank you so much. I had a great time. And if you're 40 or 50 years old or whatever other age... I hope you understand why this was a good thing to talk about on this show because some people are already out of high school, but they have a kid that they might hear something on this episode and then tell them, you know, hey, I heard this on a podcast and you should really watch out for this or whatever the fuck. So that's that. Now we can talk about shoes and then I will get out of your fucking ear. Uh, The first thing is... Oh, I have these Yeezy Lawn Marks behind me, which I don't think I've had on the podcast yet. They've been sitting in my room for quite some time. Um, I don't fucking like these at all. There's nothing, nothing about this shoe that gets my penis hard, okay? And usually shoes don't do that, but especially this one would not have a fucking chance, okay? This looks exactly like the statics, exactly like the butters. I mean, I've said this 50,000 times and I hate saying it. This is the Yeezy V2 Lundmark. If you're not list, or if you're not watching on the video right now and you care to see this shoe up close, tune in. 39 minutes and 40 seconds, or around there. Um, I'm showing them off right now. I'm not really showing them off because I'm not even happy that I have these. So this is not a flex. This is simply for your fucking entertainment here. Lundmark Yeezys, baby. They're like 300 bucks. I will admit they're a great price, and they 
have 3M throughout the whole laces of the shoe. It, they look dope, like from a like hype beast perspective. But as a sneaker collector, I don't see anything special about them. I don't think they're that different from what V2s have been in the past. So not a big fan. Now behind me, it's kind of hard to see because this fucking screen. Behind me is a picture of the Yeezy V3. These are the first pictures to come out of them. And here's a little note on sneaker news. It says, the, stri the three stripes continue to add its list of things to do, revealing more and more details of their heavily speculated Air, okay, not Air, Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V3 as debuting the third iteration, blah, blah, blah. Okay, these are fucking cool shoes. Sock-like constructions with weave arriving. Okay, they're really comfortable. Um, yeah, and they're 230 bucks release, or... Uh, fucking retail price. 230 bucks is like shit for shoes, I will admit. But it's a, it's a, it's at least they're coming down from the 700s, which are $300 retail. I mean, when you set a shoe at $300 retail and, and you're making 50,000 of them, like they're not that limited and they're expensive as fuck and they're ugly as fuck. Like at the end of the day, a lot of those are ugly. So it's like, I don't know how you're trying to sell these, bro. The fact that it's fucking Kanye is the only way that they're gonna sell. And they do, so obviously they're not having problems, but definitely going back to $200 with Yeezy is a, is a great move. Uh, I think they realized that a lot of the shoes that were 300, if you look at the 700s, you look at the inertias, the fucking analogs, even the, not the only one is the wave runners, but the mauves, there's a lot of the 700 colorways that just go under retail still to this day. And they're like 250 or 270, or even if they're at retail, they're not really selling for that because people are going to sell under market. So yeah, good, smart move there. These look extremely comfortable. They just are ugly as fuck. Uh, if you look up Yeezy V3, you'll see them. They're like camo print kind of. They look like alligator skin, in my opinion. I know that they're going to be comfortable, though. 100%. You just know the shoe's comfortable. But at the same time, does that really mean they're going to go good with fucking jeans? No. If they're all black, if they make an all-black pair, I'll buy them. And I'll try them out, and I'll really give you guys uh, my opinion. You know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll get these when they come out. Because I, I think I can get these early. I'll get these a week early, and I'll fucking wear them. Just for you guys. And I'm not posting shit in them. Because they're going to be ugly as fuck. Maybe I'll make fun of them when I have them on. Uh, moving forward, the Yeezy... Okay, they they, re, they release pictures... Fuck, now I don't have them. They release pictures of Yeezy Magnet that I talked about like two weeks ago. Let me pull these up really quick. And now, Yeezy Magnet. Okay, they were like... They look like a Wave Runner, but they were all, all gray. It was dark gray in the toe, light gray at the heel, a little bit of orange. It was the same exact sole almost as the Wave Runners. But now we got some new pictures... And I think these are confirmed that the toe of them are actually black. So you get like black, you get dark gray, there's some beige in there, a gum bottom, then the hints of orange. It looks like a like a very fucking light, not like a light purple, but like a hint purple, a hint of purple in the gray throughout the suede on the toe. And I think this colorway looks dope, okay? If this is what they're gonna look like, I'm a fan. If they're going to be all gray and light gray, not a fan. And maybe they just look different in pictures, but yeah, the new picture they released, they look great. Now, what just released yesterday? Okay, the satin, woman's satin black toe retro one. This is a fucking shoe that explains why you should buy from me, okay? I do pre-orders on a lot of shoes. Sometimes I don't post them lately because I have a lot of celebrities that follow me now and I don't want to annoy them with like stupid stories. So all the celebrities, they all get texts, they all get pre-orders, and they all get whatever the fuck they want because I'm catering to them. So, but like, I don't want to text them and say, hey, here's my pre-order list this month, and then also post it on Instagram and Snapchat, and then everyone's seeing it all the time. And then they want to take me off. So I have to play smart about that. But um, if you pre-order from me, you know that sometimes you hit and sometimes you miss. If you pre-order anything from anyone, you hit or you miss. Uh, the fucking Sean Witherspoon, whatever, the Air Maxes, those I pre-ordered for 400 bucks and they go for like $1,000 now. And the market was over $600 two weeks after release. So it like that was a big hit for people, 250 bucks on a pre-order that was guaranteed that they didn't have to worry about anything after. 
another one was the fucking the Para Air Max ones. I had those for like twenty dollars over retail or forty dollars over retail, and now they're like three fifty in the market or higher. Let me think of another one. Uh, there's like there's a lot of them. There's usually like one or two hits every I don't know three months, so, which is pretty fucking good if you're making three hundred dollars profit. Now these I pre-ordered these for three hundred fifty dollars to four hundred dollars, and the fucking market is at seven hundred dollars for a size eleven and a half and a twelve, and uh, the smaller sizes are still five fifty plus. And it's probably only going to go up because this is an air. Uh, this is a retro one, and they're satin. And satin retro ones, period, are fucking hyped to shit. Even the backboards, the backboard satins, I pre-ordered for like three eighty, and the market's way fucking higher for big sizes on those. So, part of the sneaker game is you don't always fucking win. If it was a thing that everybody does to win. Everybody would do it. You know what I mean? You can't expect every pre-order you're going to make 50 to to $100. You can't expect that. Sometimes, and it doesn't mean that people lose. A good thing about my pre-orders is that I'm pretty good at, at, like, at predicting markets. So let's say I thought the shadows were going to go for 250 I pre-ordered them at 250 and or whatever my guys are okay with. It happened to be 250 at the time. And they released, and that's exactly what they were at. So people got a lot of pairs from me. I pre-ordered like 20 pairs, but uh, they didn't get to sell them, but they didn't lose money. It wasn't 250 and then they're only going for 150 Everyone stayed clear, and they were fucking good. And now, months later, they are starting to go up a little bit. But, you know, it's not like I'm not the type of pre-order guy that's going to be like, $800 just because it's a Yeezy. No, if it's a Yeezy 700, I know to tell my guys, Yeezy 700s aren't doing fucking well. They're going for under retail. Let's pop these off at 330. People are going to love to grab them at that price. It's only $30 over retail. We make a little bit of money and the risk for them isn't that big. I always try to cater to my fucking people that are buying because I know what it's like not being able to spend a lot of money on shoes. I still don't spend a lot of money on shoes. Like I have a few pairs that I'll wear that are expensive, but I don't have a crazy fucking Red October and Platinum rotation right now. So, and I fucking nowhere near it. So, yeah. Um, one more pair is the Air Jordan 12, these fucking uh, Game Royal Retro 12s. These look like the flu games. They're only, they're just blue and black instead of red and black. I think these are dope. They're supposed to do a yellow one as well. Uh, people will start buying flu games again just because they're going to want to wear these. Uh, and do like one of each, I already know. And you think that that's not a lot of people, but I trust me it is. Uh, black and blue go together, which, especially with Jordans. People love those colors together. And if you're not seeing them wear them both, people are going to buy these and then go, oh fuck, now I want the, the flu games. So if you want to pre-order these, I have all sizes at 275 to 300 bucks. Again, not a bad price. These will probably be retailing at 190 So, uh, and they're a classic retro 12 with like a little bit of a twist it's not some ugly ass colorway i think these will sell out over time but as of right now it's 275 for most sizes the only sizes that are 300 i think is like a 15 and uh like a fucking 16 whatever the, those big ass sizes which i can get so for all you football players or whatever the fuck um yeah there's a plenty of people that hit me up with 15 so if you need these i got you now that's fucking it uh, I love you guys. Thank you for listening. If you're a student and you listen to this, please let me know what you thought of it. DM my Instagram or let the teacher know and she'll forward it to me. And thank you guys for listening. Love you all.